It's fly day, and here at HM, we're tying dry flies. But don't be scared, we're going to be having a look at Bob's bits. Don't know if Bob will like it, but there we go. Now, selection six is a dry fly selection, because... I always get asked, well, what dry fly do you put on, when, where, when, how, and what do I use it, and what size, and everything. And what I've tried to do is, is just give a quick selection for people to, right, if I go out on that, you're confident enough that you're going to cover most insects, most terrestrial insects that will land. So what I'm going to tie is just, just a very, very simple pattern, just to show you, you know, you can tie them yourself. Uh, there's a Bob's bit. And just tied the um, seals fur in, but at the back end, I really want it to be quite tight, and then I want it to loosen up towards the front. So I'm spinning that so I get a tighter profile at the back end. And sometimes in, in different light conditions, um, it can be quite tough to spot the flies. I'm going to give you a piece of advice here. If you're fishing dry fly and you are you can't see the fly, well, nine times out of ten, you're fishing the flies too far away from the boat. Um, so don't, you know, bearing in mind if you're boat fishing, that boat is always drifting forward. So if you can't see your flies at 20 yards, well, bring them back to 15 yards and fish them there. So keep them close so you can see them. But sometimes in, in awkward, awkward light situations, what I'm going to do, I'm just going to put a little tuft. I'm using polyprop here, polypropylene yarn. You can take it in white, you can have it in yellow, orange. Do a couple of variations because one colour will stand out better in one, some light and another will in another light. So just a little tuft in the wing. And the fish aren't going to mind. But it's more, this part of it is more for the fisherman. And then just build that up just a little bit. Right, get that off. And then we're going to put that hackle on here. Two choices when you put in hackles on. You, you can choose... A co most anglers, when they put dry fly on, will put cock hackle. Because that's what you put on a dry fly. It's got to be a cock hackle because it stands out and everything. Sometimes a hen hackle will be better because it cloaks it. Uh, if you're unsure about the size of hackle to the fly, well, you could do it even with the cape. Before pulling it off, you just bring the cape up, choose a feather, and offer it up to the hook, and just open the, the feather like that and think, yeah, that's about right, or want to be a bit bigger or a bit smaller, just strip a bit more off. Right, we're going to tie that in. Now with the bobs bits, it it's how can I how can I explain? It it's not a dry fly that stands proud on the surface. It's one that sits in the surface. Right, hackle in place. Now, as I said, this needs to sit in the surface, not on. But put the hackle not too much. And bring that tying silk into the front, pull that out of the way, and then do the head. One of the fibres forward, there. Right now, we'll just get rid of that, and then a couple of half hitches, just Make sure it's all right in there. If you're out fishing then, and you think, right, this fly isn't, or is sitting too proud. You want it a little bit lower. Now, in the selection, I've left all the hackles there for you. So when you go fishing, you have a choice then. If you think, yeah, it's sitting too much, too high, it's too proud. If you take your scissors or your snips when you're out fishing, go directly underneath it, and snip all that off, that will sit lower. The other thing is in preparation, 
if you just rip this out and you want this flight to really look straggly, look horrible, and put a little bit of gink just in that polypropylene and it will sit in the surface as opposed to on the surface. And if you want to see a bit more, go to my website and check out the whole selection. That's the dry fly selection. Ha <laughs> <laughs> Okay.